this is this is the the first novel I read in a little bit, and <laughs> we could just start this off, start this off quickly. So when I was reading this, I had a great time reading this. It reminded me reading reading these fiction books. It reminded me of all the imagery that's that's in these fiction books and and the story. And even though the stories, what I've, one thing I've noticed is with a lot of these fiction books, the stories they re- usually revolve around other. Just other people. So, like, you know, they have the main character, but then it's always about another person. So, it has to do with relationships. And, I mean, that's fine. You know, it's, it's cool to read about that sometimes. But, obviously, I don't want to read about that every day. So, but I had a good time. So, we're going to do kind of, uh, and I, you know, I just thought of this this morning, actually. It was kind of bizarre, but I thought, hey, we could do a character analysis. And I don't even know what that is. But we're just going to analyze the character off of, off of, who he is and what he's done and and everything about him. Not everything about him, but the thing about him. All right, so the main character of this book, his name is Charles Alberts. And he's a, a 60-year-old. He's a 60-year-old cinema director. You know, he was in theater. He was a director. And he lives in Europe or the European side of the world. <laughs> and, and this story takes place in... They don't say exactly where, but it's called the Rough and Rough Crove. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. We don't know where we don't know where it takes place. Somewhere in Europe, though, by the sea. Obviously, you can see the sea, the sea, somewhere by the sea. So this guy, sixty-year-old cinema director, he's very, he's very, just contradictory of himself, and he's very. His personality is different from what he says and what he does. So, for instance. One time he said that he wasn't involved in a lot of loves. Like, oh, no, I don't care about women. I'm about my work. But throughout the story, the b- pretty much the whole story, it's about him and his love relationships with four other women. So <laughs> that was pretty ironical. And the other part is he's, he's pretty much, he cannot see strictly what's right in front of him. So he says that he, has, he doesn't have a drinking problem. And this is, you know, what a lot of people say. They say they don't have a problem. But he drinks every single day. He drinks wine every day. Whenever he's, he went out with one of his friends, his, his friend's name was Peregrine. And, well, I can't say he went out when he was going back to London. Because he drove back to London after one of the crazy women has, I don't even know. <laughs> she drove him back. Because, oh, yeah, she thought that he was going to leave for good. So she said, oh, yeah, I'll take you. I'll take you. Because he lives in this house. He bought a house because he wanted to get away from people. But the whole story, again, is about him and his love relationships. So he's blind. He cannot see strictly what's right in front of him. And he's also very egocentric. (laughs) He's pretty much always about himself. I don't know if that's egocentric or narcissistic, but he's pretty much about himself. He's He's pretty much a psychopath, honestly. And, but he's great with words. With him being a director and in the theater side of the of the world, he's great with words. And that's one thing I literally loved about this dude. He can make up words on the spot. Like, for instance, one time he said <laughs> a girl, she was one of the girls. Her name was, I oh, forget it. We, we, her name doesn't even matter. There was four of them. You know, one of them doesn't matter. So, <laughs> so he was talking to her and she was crying. And basically, she grabbed his hand while he was running so she could pull him back. And he said, oh, you do love me. <laughs> and he was basically trying to trying to make her, make her love him, even though when or even while she did not. And she even, you know, left him. Well, all the women left him, honestly. So. <laughs> so. So I think the, you know, the main thing with this character is he's kind of. You know, he, he doesn't know what he wants. And he's, like, he makes his mind on the same topic, different days, different days, different days. Every day is something new. Whether it be a new person or just, uh, you know, a new idea. So, oh, man. So, the the most important, or the, I want to say the main idea. Or, no, we could talk about my favorite character from the book. His name was James. And he was a, he was a spiritual person. And he was, you know, this guy's 60-year-old guy's cousin. Um, the basically the main part about James was that 
he knew what to do. He was like a very practical person. He knew what to do in the real world because he was in the army in the past. In this book, it takes place around either the 60s, 70s, or 80s because his dad was in the war of, with the with Germany. So in World War One, in the World War One times. So you know, I'm just inferring, but you know, 60s, 70s, and 80s. But his brother James, cousin, sorry, he was a, a spiritual guy, and at the end, he died. He died basically because of, <laughs> basically because of nothing. He died out of his own free will, out of his mind. And, you know, with me being into neuropsychology, or not neuropsychology, neurobiology, I don't, you know, I, I know it's fake, but hey, it's a fiction book. It's supposed to be fake. But, and that's the, that's the wonderful thing about fiction. That's what I love about fiction is, it's just phenomenal. I mean, I could call it phenomenal, but I'm probably not going to read another fiction book for another few weeks. But it, this this read was great. And the one thing I've learned about this, well, I've learned multiple things <laughs> throughout this book. And that's, again, fiction, it provides life, real life lessons. But these life lef- life lessons, like, you, I don't really want to read fiction every day simply because that's kind of like bombarding my life with, it's like so much things to learn. Well, ironically, you know, I'm pretty much doing that same thing already. But, like, with so much just different life lessons that I just don't want to, like, I don't want to, I don't want to learn. So, for instance, what I've learned in this one, don't get married. Because, you know, it was just crazy. V- very, very crazy. Pretty much nobody was happy unless they were together. And while when they were apart, they loved each other. And when they're apart, they hate each other. When they're together, they love each other. When they're, you know, they just, it's just like a love-hate relationship. Another thing I learned is just to relax and be peaceful. And this is one thing pretty much I already do. You know, I I could just sit back and relax while reading a book. That's pretty much my relaxation response. But but really just, just relax and live life gleefully. And that, again, gleefully, that one of the key words that was used was or both of the keywords that were used was pleasure and pleasure and jealousy. And jealousy was basically you don't want to be jealous in life. And pleasure is just derive pleasure from as much things as you can. And don't do it to again bombard yourself, but just do it to just to feel good, honestly. Yeah, just find the good in everything. And it doesn't have to be everything. Obviously some things will be you know, will be not up to par with with your standards, but, you know, try and find the peace in those things that, that you do like. But, you know, pretty much we're ending this video right here. This great, this great novel, 500 pages. And it ended on a kind of anticlimactic <laughs> note. He pretty much just wrote down, because this was written in prose. I don't know what prose is, but I'm guessing just when you write down whatever you, what's ever on your mind, because that's pretty much what he did. And at the end, he just writ, wrote, what's next? And that was pretty, you know, that, that led me to believe that there was another book, sequel to this, but there isn't. Good, thankfully, because I might have read that. And this took th- like two full days for me to read. And I was reading diligently and very actively. So, it was a pr- honestly, I could say this was a pretty hard read for me. I could say this was a hard read for me because I was actually trying to read I was, you know, making making connections from the front book to the back book, writing down questions I had, like all the other stuff that I've I've learned with with reading how to be a, a good reader. So Iris Murdoch, thank you for this book. It provided me good life lessons, and hopefully, if you want to pick this book up too, it will provide you some more life lessons. This was the C, the C.